Jack and his play, Moses and Cecil B. DeMille's uh, Ten Commandments. Anyway, someone stopped Charlton Heston on the street and said, Say, aren't you somebody important? And he answered, Yes. And so are you. You are important in the eyes of God. You are important in the eyes of the church. You are important. You are welcome here in this place. You are needed. You are important. You matter. Because you are so important, you need to have a handle on the life-transforming power of prayer. Prayer is, is the center of worship. We do it right in the middle. Prayer should be how you begin your day and how you end your day. Prayer is essential. And tapping into that transforming power of prayer is, is super important to those of us who name the name of Christ and who walk as disciples of Christ. Prayer means to connect with the Almighty. Prayer, prayer is like a conversation, we say. You speak to God, but you also listen to God. Many speak, few listen. There are two ways to pray. Here's the first way. Dear God, listen up. Here's what I want. I want you to do whatever I ask of you, no matter how selfish or short-sighted I happen to be. Your job is to give me what I want and to do my will. And so long as I feel like you're responding to my needs and doing my will, then I will believe in you. And if you do what I want, I will openly, if you do not do what I want, if you don't do what I want, I will openly declare my doubt in your love and your power, and maybe even your existence. Now, get busy and do what I want. Hurry up. Hurry up, will you? Please, hurry up. Amen. It's alarming how many people pray this way. Here's the second way to pray. Dear God, save me from my selfishness and short-sightedness. You already know what I want. Help me to be in tune with what you want. Reveal to my mind and heart the bigger picture of how you are already at work in my life and in the lives of others around me. Most of all, dear Lord, open my eyes and ears to your divine purpose for me. Especially how that purpose relates to the bringing of the kingdom of God into this earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I humbly wait upon you. I will sit quietly in your loving embrace and listen. For any message, any impression you may have for me. And I know you won't do that on my timetable. So I will be patient. Amen. Two God's prayers. First kind, my will be done. Second kind, thy will be done. There's some scripture on the front of your bulletin. Take out your bulletin and the program and, and, and take a look at that scripture with me. The first two are uh, Jesus speaking. The third one is uh, from Paul. I'd like you to, to read them out loud to me. First, or with me. Uh, the first one is John 5, 30b. Uh, don't worry about the A's and the B's. Uh, sometimes they uh, they put the they put the uh, end of the verse in the wrong place. Uh, they didn't they didn't actually put these chapters and verses into the end of the verse. So, and, and, and the guy that did it he it was he was a little haphazard about it. Uh, here we go. Begin. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. Now this is Jesus talking. Don't you remember the Garden of Gethsemane? Don't you remember? He didn't want to die, but he knew he had to die. Not my will, he said. That's the human part. Let thy be done. That's the divine part. The next one, Jesus instructs us to his disciples. Luke 11, 9, here we go. Just read it with me, again. So I say to you, Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. 
God wants to bless us. He wants us to, he wants to pour out his blessings upon us. He wants you to ask for the right things. He wants you to be in tune with the right things. What he wants, not what you want. Over the weekend, you were supposed to sit quietly and discern any words, impressions, or images, or leadings that God may have had for you about Bethany, about our future as a church family. If you did it, we'd like to hear from you. You can email me, or Louise, or Rona. If you didn't do it, it's not too late. As you sit quietly, alone, with an open heart, listen for an impression from God. Don't be impatient. Don't be impatient if nothing comes at first. God doesn't conform to our timetables and agendas. But if you will discipline yourself to sit quietly every day, if you will open your mind to the circumstances of your life and look there for messages from God, if you will take any divine wisdom that you hear coming from some person in your life as a prompting from God, you may begin to find yourself tuned in to God's leading, to God's will. No one said it would be easy. And truthfully, the hard part is for you to get beyond the obstacles and barriers that you yourself have constructed between you and God. Most of us have insulated ourselves in our own little private worlds. Uh, most of us uh, have put up noise barriers. You know, as you go along the highway, 59, as you go toward the east side, they got these noise barriers. Uh, that's to keep out the noise from the traffic into the into the neighborhoods. We've, we've done, we've done just, uh, just the opposite. What we've done is, uh, is, is, is we create barriers of noise. Of noise. Yesterday I saw a mail carrier delivering the mail. And as he was walking along, I noticed that he had two great big earphones on his ears like this. He didn't even hear the dog barking. At stoplights, I hear music blasting out of cars. Don't you, don't you hear that? When I go into homes or hospital rooms, there is the ubiquitous noise of the TV in the background. It's almost always there, as if, as if, as if we're afraid of silence. Listening barriers need to be overcome so that you can be aware of God's presence, God's blessings, God's grace, and God's will. You, you know what your barriers are. Take them down. Take them down. Go around them. God says, be still and know that I am God. You've got to learn to listen with your soul. The only way to do that is to make it a priority to be still, to be quiet, to rest in the love of God. This morning I was having a conversation with Joanne Chilton. I hope I haven't put her to sleep. She's in the back. There you are. <laughs> Joanne, Joanne was telling me, I was, I was saying to you, I don't know how you're keeping up with all this. She said, how are you keeping up with all this, this, uh, this activity and all, all these uh, things that are happening? And, and she says, I couldn't do it unless I spent an hour and a half with God every morning in my quiet time in my little prayer. And, and she's right. She's right. I can't do without my prayer time in the morning. My, my, my day often goes bad, but it goes really bad if I don't start a good prayer. If I don't start consulting with God. Don't take my word for it. See for yourself. What does Nike say? Just do it. Say it. Just do it. This is part one of my teaching this morning. Prayer discernment. Just do it. Here's part two. What is meant by missional? This morning we are gathered here as the church. We are the body of believers here, right now, come together to worship God, to encourage one another, to focus our hearts on the movement of the Holy Spirit among us. And we are here for fellowship, we are here to recharge our spiritual batteries, we are here to pray together, we are here to share together, we are here to be together. Only the church does not exist for its own sake. As many have pointed out to us, many, not to me, but just to you too, when we hear the words, I can be with God without coming to church. Have you heard those words? I hear them all the time. And the conclusion they draw from that statement is, therefore, I do not need the church. It's a basic misunderstanding that the church exists to meet one's own personal needs. 
You're not meeting my needs, so I don't need you. The church does not exist only to serve the needs of its members. The church exists to advance the kingdom of God. Once I read a story about a chicken cannon. Have you ever heard about a chicken cannon? It's a cannon. You put chickens in. Fire. It was designated, it was designed, I should say, by airline engineers. They wanted to propel a chicken in an airplane windshield to measure the damage that a bird could do when flying into a cockpit window. Now the engineers discovered that no matter what speeds were involved and no matter what the circumstances were, the cannon would go off and the chicken would always both break and penetrate the cockpit window. They didn't know what to do, so they turned to the FAA to evaluate the test results. The report came back, it had just one sentence. Next time, use unthawed chickens. <laughs> It's important that we don't misunderstand. The word missional is an adjective to describe the work of the church. Oh, you might say, oh, you're talking about being mission-minded, you know, like getting money to mission projects. No, no. That would be frozen chicken think. Misunderstand. It's more than this. Suppose there were a fire department that had a lot of happy firefighters. Whatever needs the firefighters had for self-improvement and fellowship and contentment were addressed by other firefighters and especially by the fire chief, whose job it was to keep all the firefighters happy. Um, every once in a while, a bell would ring. It would ring out an alarm, but it was roundly ignored by the firefighters who were prone to complaining that uh, no one was keeping the fire trucks washed in good order. The fire chief couldn't get them to understand that it was their job not only to wash the fire trucks, but to actually respond to a fire. They were firefighters, but they never actually fought a fire. Can you grasp it? The church is not a club. It's not like a country club. Oh, I know we use some of the similar language, like members and things like that. But the church is not here to fulfill the needs of the club members. The pastor, the leader, is not called servant of all so that he's supposed to keep everybody happy. That's not what servant of all means. Servant of all means that uh, the pastor is supposed to model what it means to be of service to others. Neither does the church exist solely to be a family chapel for individual families to have a place for weddings and baptisms and funerals, although many people act like that. They only show up for weddings, baptisms and funerals, Christmas and Easter. That's all secondary. That's all secondary to the mission of the church, which is to reach out with the love of God to those around us in acts of service. The great American theologian H. Richard Niebuhr wrote a little volume called The Purpose of the Church and Its Ministry. And in that book, Niebuhr sums up the purpose of the church in ministry and its ministry in one line. He says, and I quote, The purpose of the church is to advance the love of God and the love of neighbor. And the more I've reflected on that, the more I see that as a summary of Jesus' great commission, which tells the church of its mission. Go and make disciples, baptize them, and teach them everything that I've taught you in the Gospels. And by the way, if you do this, if you do this, Jesus said, I will be with you in spirit, energizing you, encouraging you, and aiding you on. The word missional means that the church is organized around the commission, the commission given to it by Jesus. That is to go out into the world, spreading the love of God and neighbor through acts of grace and service. How? How do you do this? We follow the example of Jesus. He didn't spend all his time in the synagogue. He didn't spend all his time uh, putting together synagogue programs for the synagogue goers. He went to the synagogue every week. He worshipped and prayed. But then he went out to the world to serve, gauging, serving others with love and compassion. The world we live in, friends, is changing rapidly. The culture we live in is becoming 
less overtly influenced by Christianity. There was even some talk this week in the news, I don't know if it was real or not, but there was some talk this week in the news about, about it, 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 that it either is or becoming more difficult uh, to uh, advance a Christian witness uh, when one is in the military. I hope it's not true. Bethany needs to wake up to the fact that we can no longer take a sympathetic culture for granted. It's not becoming, it's becoming less and less sympathetic to Christianity. And Bethany needs to discern prayerfully the ways God would have us to recalibrate our ministries and our activities so that we can have a new beginning. A new beginning that's focused on the mission that Jesus gave us to do. Churches that do this, I believe, will survive in the future. Churches who do not do this, who, who, who stay focused on their own activities and their own wishes and wants and desires, who pay little attention to the mission of Jesus for the church. I believe these churches are cursed to die. Remember the parable of the fig tree that bore no fruit? It was cursed to wither and die. We've been giving, given the mission to bear fruit. Churches that do the will of God and follow the example of Jesus and focus on advancing the kingdom of God will be energized by the Holy Spirit. A fruit tree that is properly pruned and fertilized will bear good fruit. Well, Bethany's been pruned, and Bethany's been fertilized. You know what I mean? Now, now it's time for us to blossom. Now it's time for us to bear fruit. Now's the time to look up and to look out at the right field, fields before us. We need only trust God and serve others. It is not a difficult strategy. If we do, I believe what God will bless Bethany on into the future. I believe that God will be with us and the Holy Spirit will help us and that we'll be a witness to Christ both in word and deed to those around us, which is our job. If we do this, if we recalibrate and focus, have a new beginning, embracing, celebrating, and doing the mission of the church as given to us by Jesus, I believe the future of Bethany will be bright and our best days will be ahead of us. Shall we pray? Gracious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, may we hear and feel your spirit guiding us onto the true path of Christian service. May we respond with our whole hearts in being authentic disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, following him not just to faith, and not just to heaven, but following him and advancing the kingdom of God right here on earth. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. We're going to stand.